Hey, no cap. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm really glad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good evening. I'm praying for Peter. Today we celebrate the fifth guys. Sunday of Lent. I know. Our entrance, same as number 559. From ashes to the living I'm, I'm font. Okay. For verse 3, <laughs> please sing verse 3J, which is the last verse Amen. on the opposite page. Again, so number 559. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So sisters and brothers, uh, as we now journey together through this Lenten Caesar season towards the, the celebration of our Lord's Passover, the Paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, we reach this fifth Sunday that begins Passion Tide, time when the, the church re reflects very intentionally, and one might even say intensely, on the sufferings which Christ willingly, willingly took upon himself to merit for us the grace of salvation. <clears throat> the sign, the outward sign of this season is the veiling of images, which of course reminds us of our heavenly home, and it is a kind of image of what separation from God might mean, eternal separation, that we would not see his face nor the face of any of our loved ones. And so we ask for the grace to always, with confidence, look upon the face of Christ, upon the angels and saints, and merit <coughs> from them the love that they pour into our hearts. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The readings for this Mass begin on page 109 of the Missalet. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall weep rejoicing. The, the Lord, Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Lord, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, 
depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So The first reading from Isaiah. Where the prophet is speaking to God's people who are now returning from the many years of their exile in Babylon.
The prophets had told them that Israel lost possession of the promised land because it had turned away from relationship with God. To seek some other good besides God, but we are all made for God, for his friendship, and nothing else will satisfy him. So the prophet reminds the people of what had happened at the Exodus long ago during the days of Moses when he opened a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, leading out chariots and horsemen of powerful army, in other words, allowing the Egyptians to pursue them, and yet not till they rely prostrate together never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wig. But now the prophet says, as essential as it is, as important it is to remember that event, something new is going to happen. Something new is happening now. See, I'm doing something new, the Lord says. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert that lies between Babylon and the Promised Land, you know your geography, you, you know about that desert. In that desert I will make a way, and in the wasteland rivers. And I will put water in the desert, rivers in the wasteland, that you may drink as you return to the land that I promised to Abraham and his descendants to possess. And for us, the church has us remember this, uh, this oracle of the prophet so that we can remember, recall how the Lord has put desert in the desert of has put water in the desert of this world, rivers in the wasteland of this world so ruined by the principalities and the powers, namely the waters of baptism through which we receive the living water, which is the Holy Spirit that brings us, that leads us toward that promised land that is not Palestine, but which is the heavenly kingdom. So the church would have us remember what God has done for us in giving us that living water, but that that living water has come to us through Jesus, through taking on the lowliness of our human nature, suffering for love of us, all the malice of our sins, even unto the death of his body, but always responding to that sin, not with hatred, not with anger or a desire for vengeance, but rather with his Father's love that we saw so beautifully described last week in the parable of the two sons where our Heavenly Father runs in joy to embrace us when we come to him with repentant hearts 
And the psalm, responsorial psalm, is um, one of my favorites. It's Psalm 123, which is a psalm of the returning exiles. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, those in Babylon, we were like men dreaming. We never thought this might be possible, that God would show us such mercy after such a long time in exile, an exile that, yes, was the consequence of our own unfaithfulness. But now, all we can say is what the nations say as we come back to Jerusalem. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. And there's that beautiful image of what grace is like. If you've ever been to the um, promised land, the Holy Land, to the southern desert um, outside of Jerusalem in Judea, it's very dry indeed. There's very little water in it. But then there are those spring rains that come so quickly that uh, the torrential downpours that, that, that suddenly there are torrents of water where before there was no water at all. And that's an image of grace when it comes into our lives. The love of God that is given us through Jesus and his sacrifice for us. And we find that we who sow in tears because this world is full of so many evils that bring tears to our eyes, yet this, this torrent of water, this living water, which is the Holy Spirit, this water in the desert, this river in the wasteland, it sustains us and gives us the hope that in time we shall reap rejoicing. That the evil of this, falling, of this fallen world will ultimately be vanquished. And as we weep, we carry the seed to be sown. The seed which is the word of God we do the work of evangelization. We evangelize in our family, in our parish, in our community, in our workplace. We let Jesus be known by the holiness of our lives, as imperfect as they may be, but you know, a little bit of holiness can go a long way. That letter to the Philippians, St. Paul, I consider everything as a loss, everything in my life because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom he met on that road to Damascus where he experienced Jesus and Jesus' personal love and care for him with a love that opened his eyes to his own pride and ignorance of the things of God, even though he was a very educated Pharisee, and came to see that the way to God is not the way of pride, it's, it's not the way of boasting, it's the way of humility, of acknowledging how much the Lord loves us and has given us his grace, his love, his attention, his care, his compassion, his mercy, even though we have not merited it. He loves us not because we somehow do something to make him love us, to draw down his attention to us. He just simply loves us. And when we realize that, as St. Paul realized on the road to Damascus, when we find Jesus, or when Jesus opens our eyes finally to how much he loves us, then everything does change. 
and everything else next to relationship with Jesus, it just doesn't hold a candle. But with Jesus, everything, every good thing becomes possible as the Lord wills for us. But how consoling for us that as, as great a saint as St. Paul was and, and is, he says, my righteousness, my, my relationship with God, it depends on faith, faith in Jesus, faith in the, the love that Jesus has for me, the truth that he teaches me, which is the expression of his love, and the power of his resurrection to make to give me a new kind of life that I never had before. Sharing in his sufferings, which itself is a grace. Sh suffering no longer from my own evil deeds, predominantly, but now suffering for the sake of what is true and good and holy. That I would be willing to suffer whatever it takes in order that I might show that attention and mercy and kindness to others as Christ has, has shown it to me. And in sharing that suffering, I'm conformed to his, his death, which for me means a death to the old habits of sin and the beginning of a new life in Jesus, God's life in me. But then he says, but it's not that I've already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it. And that's, that's our situation as well. We know we are not fully mature in the faith. And yet we continue to pursue the perfection that grace makes possible for us in hope that we will come to that perfection, reap the harvest that we now sow in tears. Because, and this is such a beautiful expression, I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. He has taken my heart. And I will not take it back from him. So we come to the gospel. The Pharisees and scribes, the educated class, the experts who've been to the seminary, you know, have been ordained. They bring a woman caught in the act of adultery before Jesus. And they remind Jesus that in the law of Moses, uh, such women, and also, by the way, the men who committed adultery with them, uh, were to receive the death penalty. Their, their presence was not, their continued presence in the community of the faith was, was not to, to be tolerated. And they were to be stoned to death. So they then asked Jesus, well, what do you say? And it's a trap. How so? Well, if Jesus says, we're not going to stone her, we're not going to give the, the, inflict the punishment, then they could accuse Jesus to the highest authorities that he's a, he doesn't follow the law of God. He doesn't follow the law of Moses. How can he be the Messiah or prophet that many of you say he is? He's a sinner. And they'd have a point. But then if he says, stone her, And you know, the people already have stones in their hands, right? Jesus, give us the order. Give us the order to, the, to do what the law of Moses requires. If he does that, then he'll be reported to the Roman authorities because the Romans did not allow the Jews, whom they ruled over, to execute the capital punishment unless they gave the okay. Which is why I remember when Jesus was, was brought before Pilate 
they had to get his permission to execute Jesus for blasphemy. They couldn't do it themselves without the Roman stamp of approval. So Jesus was, as it were, caught between the rock and a hard place. But we see how he responds. So he, he begins to write on the ground with his finger. And there are many doctors of the church who have thought of you know, what was he writing. And many have said, well, knowing the hearts of, of men, as he did, he was writing down the sins of all the women's accusers. He was doing it in their sight so that they could look and say, oh my, <laughs> how did he know that about me? And so as they're looking at that, he says, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And he's just written all their sins down in the <laughs> on the ground. And so they go away one by one, beginning with the elders. Because why, why not with the young people? Well, you know how young people are. You know how we were when we were younger. So zealous. Everything was black and white. Let's have righteousness and right away. And we get a little bit older and we realize, well, it's not quite that easy. A little mercy would be helpful. And so now it's just Jesus and the woman. And he says, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And according to the law of Moses, the only way that a person could be condemned of a crime <coughs> was of a capital offense is if there were two, at least two witnesses. But there are no witnesses there. <laughs> and no witnesses. So here's Jesus, as it were, following the law of Moses and yet showing us that the law of Moses, the justice that it demands, is, is only fulfilled through mercy. Justice comes only through mercy. And so because there are no witnesses, Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go. And by this encounter with me, let your life be changed. Don't forget what, what I have done for you, which I have done lovingly for you, because I do love you. Go now and change your life so that that love may, may rest always within your heart. What a beautiful lesson for us. There's so much evil in the world. And we have done our share. Jesus says he does not come into the world to condemn us, but rather to lead us to self-condemnation, to the realization that I have done these things. I have dishonored God. I have dishonored others. I have brought hardship into the world, trouble into human relationships. I have done this. And as the prodigal son said, I'm, I've, you know, I've sinned against heaven and against you, Father. I, I don't deserve to be called your son. Jesus brings us to the point of self-condemnation. He has to, because it's only through self-condemnation that we can begin anew, receive the mercy of God. The Pharisees never thought they had anything to confess. <laughs> they had nothing, they'd done nothing wrong. They kept all the laws. And so they, they put to death the Lord of glory, imagine and thought they were doing a good deed. No, we condemn ourselves. And we bring that self-condemnation to the sacrament of reconciliation, a powerful sacrament that all of us need. 
and we say to our Heavenly Father, I'm a follower of Jesus, and yet I have betrayed him in this way, and this way, and this way, by what I've done, and in these ways that I've not done the things that I should have done. I, I don't deserve to be called any more a Christian. And it's when we've reached that point, and it's real, it isn't just uh, an, act, an act we put on, but it's real, then the grace of that sacrament really does take root in our hearts. And we begin, or further begin, a, uh, a new life in Jesus. As the priest says to us, what does he say to us? Go and sin no more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And profess together the faith the apostles taught us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Entrusting ourselves to the life-giving power of God's grace, we now voice our prayers to our Heavenly Father for our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord. For those preparing to receive the Paschal Sacraments as we approach the Passover of O Lord, that the Lord may continue to strengthen them in the grace of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. That those in civil governance will exercise their God-given authority in accordance with God's eternal law, achieving justice through mercy and truth, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For an end to war and violence, especially in Ukraine, for those compelled to leave their homes, for adults and children traumatized by senseless destruction, for those who have died as a result of war, for the grace to heal and the courage to pursue peace, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the grace to repent of rash judgment and show mercy to others, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the poor and those in financial distress, and for all who have requested our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For faithful marriages and an abundance of religious vocations, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, especially Kathleen McFarland and John Creech, that the Lord may bless them and protect them from all evil, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, that Christ the Good Shepherd may lead them safely home to be at peace with God our Heavenly Father, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. And for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day, We pray to the Lord, grant our prayer, O Lord. Most merciful Father, forgive our evil doing 
and free us from sin. Prepare our hearts to enter the mystery of your Son's passion, death, and resurrection, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our second collection this evening is for the Parish Improvement Fund. Thank you for your generosity. Our preparation hymn is number 560, Lord, Let Me Walk, number 560. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Grant McDermott. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the 
Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sin, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hand, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, and Wilton our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now, at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Hugh of Grenoble and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Joe. We told it's the Catamundi, Miserere nobis. On your day, we told it's the Catamundi, Miserere nobis. On your day, we told it's the Catamundi. Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Has no one condemned you, woman? Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no
Let us pray. <clears throat> we pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We praise God uh, for the grace to be together as his church to offer this uh, worship of God um, for our sanctification and that of the world. A few upcoming events uh, to be aware of, details of which can be found in the e-bulletin. Wednesday, April 16th, our Sodality will host a meal for the University of Maryland Catholic Campus Ministry community. If you can help, uh, please see the sign up in the e-bulletin. Um, these, these opportunities are always ways to get to know other parishioners and uh, to do uh, a beautiful work of, of mercy. Sunday, April 24th, it's the Sunday after Easter, is Divine Mercy Sunday. We will pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3.30 that day. We're making an accommodation for the deaf community. So usually that starts at 3, this year, 3.30. There will be a collection of donations for our annual rummage sale after all masses on that Sunday, April 24th, just to let you know. The Bridget McDermott uh, Sunday afternoon tea is back. It will take place on Sunday, May 1st. And it's a sodality activity, but uh, anyone in the parish is invited as well uh, for some tea and some little finger sandwiches. It's a nice event. The April share food menu can be found in the e-bulletin. Orders and payments are due by next Sunday, April 10th. Next week, Holy Week begins. The complete schedule can be found in the e-bulletin and on the back of our inaugural edition of the St. Hugh Newsletter, which is available at the entrances of the church. So we're going to continue to have the e-bulletin, but it's also nice to have something in the hand, you know, that you can take home, maybe put on your refrigerator and so forth. So we are going to now have these uh, weekly uh, newsletters for you to take home with you. And uh, if they're very popular, we'll print more, you know, we'll print as many as we need. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it is nice to have something in the hand that you can say, yep, I went to church last Sunday. A short curse, uh, course of preparation is beginning for all adults in the parish who have yet to receive the sacrament of confirmation. You can go to the e-bulletin or call the rectory to register for this short course. And thanks to all who made the international potluck a success on Thursday evening. We celebrated the solemnity of St. Hugh of Grenoble, and it was a good way for us to get back together, you know, after two years of the pandemic, to feel that we could uh, comfortable enough to be together, to thank St. Hugh for his intercession, and to enjoy some very fine food from all the diverse uh, cultures uh, that are represented in our parish. And now I would invite you to please pick up the prayer card that you will find in the pew racks and pray with me the prayer to St. Hugh of Grenoble to ask his intercession in the 75th year of the founding of our parish. And let's pray together. O God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds, the Bishop St. Hugh of Grenoble, a man burning with divine charity and outstanding for that faith which overcomes the world, grant through his intercession that we too persevering in faith and charity, may merit to be sharers of his glory. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Number 817, Lift High the Cross. Number 817. <laughs> Till all the world. 
Oh. 